news. The reading is from Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 7. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my servant, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by evil. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. And I am trying desperately to go back to gallery view and can't get my cursor over there. There we are. Because when I'm sharing a sermon, I like to be able to see everybody. Um, Rhonda shared with me this week that she visited another worship service and it was a lovely service, but she conveyed that almost the entire service was in, was in a shared screen. And so you saw that center screen, but you couldn't see the folks from the congregation. One of the things that I value most about our Zoom worship experience is that I can keep it on gallery view and see all of you. And, I, and, and of course, once in a while, I flip over to that other screen so I can see people that I don't see. There's Bill Hammond. I didn't know he was there. Hi, Bill. It, it's so good, is it not? to share in this community as we begin this season of Lent. I don't know how it happened. The calendar seems to whip by with ever-increasing rapidity, and here we are at the first Sunday of Lent. I'm not sure how that's possible, but we are here to enter into 40 days of preparation for the experience of Christ's passion and the wonderful experience of resurrection. And so 40 days of preparation. And, of course, we heard the scriptures from the gospel today of Jesus going into the wilderness for 40 days. 40 days of discernment, 40 days of reflection, 40 days of soul searching, 40 days of wondering, of praying, of seeking. 40 days. And so that is for us as well. Jesus was at the very beginning of his ministry. This has happened right after his baptism right after he was to begin what he was called to do. And so a, a good time to think about calling, and I want to very early set aside the concept that a calling from God is only for those of us who have entered into or are considering entering into ordained ministry. Yes, indeed, any of us who enter into ministry should feel a call to do so. But, but please, let's not limit a call from God to only those who go into professional ministry. That, it, it just doesn't work that way. It, it's, a, it, it's a message from God, a feeling inside, a sense of, of something that needs to be done that you feel compelled to do. Um, it might be, I don't know, building a wooden structure to serve as a food pantry. It might be that. It, it might be saying yes to a request from friends for you to do something that you were hesitant to do. It may be a dream that you've held since you were a child and never felt the courage to seek. I, I remember years ago a, 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 a woman in 
let's say, advanced age, sharing that she wanted to go to college and get a degree. And her family said, what are you, nuts? Do you realize how old you're going to be in four years when you get that degree? And she said, yes. And whether I get the degree or not, I'm going to be that age in four years. I would rather be that age and have my degree. Lots of people told her she was crazy, but she felt a calling to do that. And finally, after years and years of suppressing it, decided it was time to answer that call. Forty days to think about it. You have 40 days. This is day one. You have 40 days to think about your call. The worship committee decided that we would focus during these 40 days on babies, infants, preteens, teenagers, those younger folk that often don't get talked about when we talk about the ministries that are carried out. And so I decided that I would start with talking about Jeremiah. I've always been intrigued by Jeremiah's call. And God said to Jeremiah, I'm calling you to be my prophet. And Jeremiah said, oh, no, 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 no. You have to understand, I'm, I'm just a kid. I can't do that. I can't do that. There's this new word that's come into my knowledge in recent years. I guess maybe I'm late to the party. But up until about a year and a half ago, I had never heard the word adulting. That, that, that was a verb. And, and I have heard many young adults say, oh, I can't do that. I haven't done my adulting yet. I actually had to ask me, what, what, what does that mean? I, I don't understand. And so there's a sense in which God said to Jeremiah, I want you to be my prophet. And Jeremiah said, I can't do that. I haven't done my adulting. And God said, no, Jeremiah, you don't, don't give me that. You don't understand. Before you were born, I called you. Before you came into this world, I consecrated you to be my prophet. So here's the way it is. Take off your childhood jodfers and put on your big boy pants and do what I tell you that you're going to do. Whatever I say for you to say, you're going to say. And wherever I send you, you're going to go. That's a bit of a shocker, isn't it? If you feel this sense of call and you say, I, I, I can't do that, I'm too old. Or I can't do that, I'm too shy. Or I can't do that, I'm not sure I'll do a good job. I mean, how many excuses do we humans come up with to not do the things that God in subtle and sometimes not so subtle ways is calling us to do? To me, this thing, I haven't done my adulting, is, is just really a way of saying I, I'm not willing to accept that responsibility. I just can't. Can't do it. Well, sometimes God says, guess what? Don't care how old you are. Don't care how young you are. Don't care what your experience is. You have to understand that when I created you, I gifted you with certain things. And so you can't tell me I can't do it. Or I don't know how to do it. Or I'm afraid to do it. Here's the deal. I gave you those gifts. You can't fool me. I, I implanted them in your DNA. It's who you are. Don't tell me you can't sing. I gave you the voice. Don't tell me you don't have those kinds of hand skills. I gave them to you. Don't tell me you're not a carpenter. I know you can be. Don't tell me you're not good at leading people. I gave you the skills. Don't tell me you can't follow capable leaders. I gave you the ability. I did that. I did that. And I have to admire Jeremiah. He did it. I don't know how fast adulting can happen, but apparently it happened pretty fast for Jeremiah. He did it. He was a kid. He was just a kid. And you know as well as I do that very often adults, they just don't have time to listen to kids because what do they know? Have you ever been told when you were young, you can't be a part of this conversation, you wouldn't understand it? I've always thought, give the kid a chance. 
Might surprise you. Kids are amazing at what they can do. I remember the story of a man sitting in a park and a, and a, I mean, this does, this, it's a story, okay? It, it's not in real life. Don't believe that this actually happened. But the story is a guy was sitting in a park and a kid came by riding his bicycle on the top of a railing. And he started to get misty-eyed. And the guy sitting next to him on the bench said, what are you getting misty-eyed for? He said, you see what that kid's doing? He said, yeah. He said, someday somebody's going to tell him he can't do that. That, you can't, that you're not capable of doing that. Wouldn't that be a shame? I mean, wouldn't that be a sin? For somebody who has ability and skills to tell her, you can't do that. You're not good at that. Nobody's going to believe you. Nobody's going to hire you. Nobody's going to listen to you. What if somebody told that to Jeremiah? Or how about our new youthful poet laureate that shared that poem? Will any of us forget that poem at the inauguration? What if somebody told her, nah, you're too young. And what would the world be robbed of? What wouldn't happen? And we wouldn't even know that it didn't happen. We wouldn't even know we were robbed. But because she said, I'm going to try. I'm going to give that a shot. And how many people were blessed by that? And how many people will continue to be blessed by the gift that she dared to express? Calling from God, yes, has something to do with people who go into clergy, to, to, to clergy positions who are ordained full-time ministry. That happens. But I happen to know that we have people in Emmanuel Church who decided to become residents in Christian ministry in Emmanuel because they felt a sense of call to expand their lay ministry. And even though they are not in the residency program now, it had its function. Emmanuel gave them the opportunity to express this, to experiment with it, to try it on for size. And Emmanuel gave them an environment where they could do that. And you know what? They're doing it. Their lives have changed because they felt a sense to expand their lay ministry. And they took a risk. They said, I'm not sure about this, God. I don't know how it's going to go, but okay, I'll give it a shot. I don't have to wait for my adulting. Yes, I get it now. Adulting is a verb. It's a verb because you do it. It's active. It's not passive. And so a call from God compels us to act, to say yes, even though we don't know what we're saying yes to in all of its fullness. You're just saying yes for the moment. You're saying yes, I'll begin down that path. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by evil. Now, what does that mean? That means wrestling with the questions within him, I don't know if I can do this. Am I going to get support? And am I going to be heard? Looking at our history as a people, we know that all of the prophets got stoned. They got cast out. Do I want to do this? Do I want to risk this? Am I risking my life? I grew up watching my father work with wood. Maybe I ought to just work with wood. I'm good at that. I think I'll just stay a carpenter. What are the thoughts that went through Christ's mind as he was wandering in the desert? Have you ever wandered in a desert in, in the wilderness? Ain't nothing there. Sand and dirt and rock. It's not a hospitable place. And sometimes wrestling with a call from God is like being in the wilderness. It doesn't feel hospitable because it's challenging us to consider things that we, in our, quote, right mind, wouldn't consider. It 
Jesus said, let the children come unto me. And unless you become like a child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you become like a child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And I firmly believe that kids have grand ideas of what they can be. They are so able to dream dreams that adults would think, what are you wasting your time on that for? What, you want to be an artist? Do you know how little artists earn? What, you want to be a poet? How are you going to make a living being a poet? What, you want to be president? Do you know how hard it is to become president? What, you want to be a community organizer? How are you going to get an income? What makes you think you have the ability to be a community organizer? Adults are so good at shooting good ideas and amazing dreams in their head. So amazing at doing that. Doesn't it pain you when you see a parent put down a child for trying to be a creative child? But we have this parent who created all of us. We have this God who gifted each one of us with particular and unique gifts. Just waiting, just waiting for us to express them. And frequently calling and pulling and opening doors and being frustrated when we shut the door or we turn around and go the other way and or say, did I hear something? What patience our God must have. So, brothers and sisters, I would suggest that as we begin this 40 days to consider babies and children and teenagers from the scriptures, I invite you to try to reclaim your child. Who were you like when you were little? What dreams did you have of what your life was going to be? And did anybody tell you, don't go there? Or are there dreams that nobody dissuaded you from, but you dissuaded yourself from? Today is the first Sunday of the season of Lent. Unless you become a child, <laughs> you can't enter the kingdom of God. 40 days. This is day one. Considering call. Considering what God may wish for you. 40 days. Go. Amen.